as we having the dominoes as we having the pizza hut so that anyone can order uh, the pizza burger <clears throat> whatever you are willing to sell through our website and here we are going to follow the clean architecture in this project so as per the clean architecture we are going to manage the application components like this way so we having the entities at the center and these entities we will map to the database tables we will have the repository layer where we write our data access logic then we having the services where we write our business logic then we having the ui where we write our presentation logic so this is the the layer architecture we having this is the onion architecture we having and here the same project architecture which we can simplify it more like this way so how we are going to create the layers for this one we are going to create the layers these one entities repository domain models business layer web ui so these various layers we are going to create into this project and what is the project architecture we are discussing using the same project architecture you can build any type of application so these are some example i just given to you like you can build a et tech platform like dotnetx.com you can build here any e-commerce website like flipkart amazon even you can build here food delivery which i'm going to build here online doctor consultation website like practo job portal like nokri online services let's say urban club uber ola video streaming platform online hotel booking so any here the similar project architecture can be followed because so many people having in their mind they did work only on one project they have not work on many projects so they don't have the much experience so this is not the actually case here if you know how to build an end to end application with all the best practices of the asp.net core with all the possible design patterns which we can use in asp.net core so you can build any type of application is it clear more <clears throat> i was just speaking okay so let's create here the project layers i just mentioned in this picture and this diagram Okay, so let me create the things over here. So this is my widget studio. And first create here a blank solution file. So I'm just going to create a new project. Let's make a search for solution file. why it's not coming
blank solution it's not coming here okay not an issue uh, let's look for a class library this one so i'm using here the c sharp class library so it automatically <coughs> help us to define the solution name so solution name would be here let's say e pizza hub and we are creating here for let's say 8 pm so this would be my solution name define the project name so as a project i'm creating a project for entities so this would be here for entities this way because here first layer we having for entities so this i'm creating the project and here you can use dotnet 5 or dotnet 6 should i use dotnet 5 or dotnet 6 to let me know 6 but for using the 6 make sure you have to install widget studio 2022 then only you can use this one otherwise you will not able to use this one okay sir okay okay so i'm just going to use a .NET 6 only simple so i'm using here this .NET 6 so this is the entities layer entities <coughs> project we added here let me first add all the layers then we do the other things now similar way let me add here a one more layer for models i'm adding here a one more class library new project same class library that is here a pizza hub dot models dot net 6 so this one we added here for models and then we can add here a one more project for repositories so add a new project again for class library and it would be here for repository this way let's say repositories same way we add the others project that we having for services this is my services one So if you're looking at here, we added the entities, repository, models, services, then web UI. So I did one more project that would be here for web UI. It is MVC template. So it would be here, UI, let's say UI. So .NET 6, HTTPS now let's click on the create button so these are the projects layers we have created even in the real life as well we do the same thing i'm right <clears throat> so let us start here with entities so for entities we are going to create here some tables so what are various tables we are going to create we are going to create these many tables in our database 
so if you're looking at here this database table diagram we can divide here into two sections so we having here mainly two things this is related to the spnet core the right hand side this is the tables as per the spnet core spnet core and these are the tables here which we are going to use to store the other information in the database so spnet core identity we are going to use here to implement the login sign up and sign out workflow so now spnet core identity we having these tables so we having here spnet roles table where we store roles information here we store user information and what are the user what are the roles a user is containing so those roles we define over here so these three tables are important in this picture for the login sign up and sign out functionality this is user table this is role table this is the mapping table where we mapping the user id with the role id we having here other tables as well this is about a spinet user lo logins table which is going to use when we are implementing the login from the facebook twitter and google so here it's going to store the provider key for the login this is about the token what are the user token we are going to maintain based upon the provider key here we can mention the user token this is about the user claims what are the various claims value we having for a users we can store over there so claim it just like we have been you know the other card and the pad card in india based upon that you can claim your identity similar way a user identity how you are going to claim so it can be here let's say the user claim mobile number it can be let's say date of birth so these are the some user claims to identify the user identity similar way we having the role claims here how the roles we are going to claim so role can be here let's say admin user it can be here and user so for that purpose we can define the claim let's say admin will be responsible for doing some administrative activity and user would be uh, they responsible for doing only simple and user activity let's say user is just browsing it just purchasing something so based upon that requirement we can define the claims here so here mainly you need to focus only these three tables which i told you here user roles and this table these are important table over there so do you have any query regarding these tables structure and everything i'll go to go ahead okay the other tables if you're looking at we having here items whatever the various items you're going to sell let's say pizza burger cold drinks <clears throat> those are the items then we having the item type it can be here let's say veg non-veg item type category in category it would be here burger pizza or uh, drinks so these are the categories over there so what are the items we are displaying to the end user those items the end user can enter the shopping cart this is the cart cart items and for a cart the user will do the payment so where that payment information we store we store that payment into information in this table so i will show the way <coughs> sorry how we can integrate the payment gateway so as a payment gateway we will use here razor pay so razor pay payment detail we will store in this payment table and this payment having a status if payment is confirmed here we will place the order so that order information we are going to store over there and when the order uh, when the user is doing the payment that time we will take the user address as well so that at this given address we will deliver the pizza and we will deliver the burger over there so this is these are the the 
the tables we are going to use to create our typical online food delivery website <clears throat> like we have been dominoes pizza hut and swiggy is it clear so do you have any query regarding these tables are good to go ahead good to go ahead. so let's see how we can create all these entities so for all these tables we need to define some classes so here we will add those classes so let me remove this class so for adding the classes i'm not going to create those classes <coughs> myself and those classes i can reuse so i'm already having classes i'm putting here this way so i just shown the picture similar way we have been here item class with these properties we have been here category we have been here cart item we have been here order so these are the classes containing the properties and here we are using the spnet core identity so when it is coming to the spnet core identity so spnet core identity actually helping us to support these functionalities so here it automatically provide us the user and the role entity so same we are doing here there is a user and role class we created where we are inheriting the identity user so identity user is a part of this microsoft spnet core identity nuget package so i'm not using the built in spnet core identity i'm doing some customization so that i can able to add my own columns to the spnet user table and spnet roles table so here i'm adding this extra column which is not available in identity user so to use the spnet core identity make sure you have installed a new get package that i'm going to install here for spnet core identity entity framework core because we are using it with entity framework core so make sure you have downloaded entity framework core and we are downloading here all the 6.0 because we are using the dotnet 6 for building the code so this one i'm downloading so let me accept it so we added here as soon as we added it automatically and all the necessary name spaces over here without any issue this way so this way we added the things over here for entities so now for entities we need to create the database so where we define the database things so database thing we define here in this repositories so let me add the project reference here of the entities project reference i'm adding here now this class i will rename with the name app db context so it would be here app db context now in this app db context we need to inherit it from the identity db context so this is built in class in spnet core identity from that class we need to inherit it our db context do pass user store as user role store we having the role here and data type for primary key so primary key data type is integer this way you need to add it now here just add all these entities 
using db set as we did the same thing in entity framework core same way using the db set we need to add all the entities here like this way so all the entities we added here so now let me define the connection string so that we can do the migration so we having a method here on configuring in the own configuring method i can check for the configuration if option builder dot is configure if it is not configure now let me define here connection string it is use sql server this one and here let me pass the connection string so connection string as per my system i'm going to define it so this way i'm adding it define the database name let's say e pizza hub 8 pm this is my database name now install the other new get packages here so we having the entity framework core package we need to download and install it sir uh, one question i have hmm so this one i'm installing the package sir so why you pass uh, a user role and data type in identity db context and why i'm passing the data type for the user table primary key and the role table primary key the data type we are passing take these why you took the two classes only what about other classes we have item and category also other why? classes i'm not changing as i said here what are the main class we have main class we having only user and role so only whenever you will do the customization you will do only at these two tables level because other things we are not using in a normal workflow the other things are going to be used whenever you are using the login from social media so that is fine to login for social media and other things so that's only two things i'm using here okay <clears throat> for the migration i'm using here tools as well let me install the tools Sir, one question I have that is, can you come to app DB context? Uh, sir, here based on on configuring, why do we have to do that? Because we are overridden on configuring the data. This is not required to add; it's optional. If you want to add, you can add it. Otherwise, you can skip it. Base means whatever the default setting we have being the base class. I want to apply those also. so now we added here everything let me build this project so it is building fine we don't have any error well, let me open here package manager console so from here i can open the package manager console and here let me select repositories as a start a project here also i'm selecting the repository as a start a project now run the command 
add dash migration then migration name is initial so we are doing the migration here so it's created that everything so before running the next command to make sure everything is generated as per our requirement this we create table user role cart categories item type orders payment details so everything is looking fine to us <clears throat> okay now run the next command so next command we have been here for creating the database that is um, date and test database so now here the database has been created we can check out here So this is my SQL Server Management Studio. And here I'm having AD Tech 8 p.m. No data, it's a piece of 8 p.m. So this is the database has been generated. Okay. So this is the one we have been and to implement the login workflow and the sign up workflow. Let me add here some users, sorry, roles. So roles I'm adding here, let's say administrator is a role I'm adding here for admin. Normalized name is admin here, currency, we can add here. Even I'm having a seed data method which can be used to generate everything over there so that we don't need to put anything. So it is here and user and user role. Any number. So make sure whenever you will set up in your local machine, you are doing the same thing. And actually here we are going to build a website for like Domino's. So for Domino's, we are going to have items. This is the menu here. In the menu, these are the, uh, let's say these are the items we have been like this way. So as per these items, we are just going to order them. I think it is dominos.co.in. Go for the dot com. So this is the items we need over there. So we need to add here this picture. This is my item name. This is my item description. And we have been the pricing as well. So this data entry would be provided by the client, by the customer. What are the product he is going to sell? Simply. So same thing I'm just going to do here. I'm just going to have this seed data. The data we can insert over there. So the data I have added into the role tables here. Concurrency column is all about at what time you added this entry. This is a concurrency. 
So here we have been a seed data. Let me open the SQL query. And here I'm having a SQL script. Let me copy that one and add the data into the items table. So we adding here these categories, let's say pizza, desert, and vibraces. This item type, veg and non veg. These are the items, farmhouse, pepper paneer. These are the, the pizza entry I'm adding here. So this thing will be provided by the customer for which we are creating the website. So this thing also I'm adding here in the repository for the reference so that you can use it. So we have been here, let's say SQL scripts. We have been folder. Let me add a item. It's a C data script. So this one we having a seed data dot SQL. Let me remove everything. So this one I did, I added here for a reference so that you can use it on your local machine as well. And if you're looking at in this script, we using some images as well. So we having these images. So these images also we need to have. So in the UI layer, we having a www root folder. There I need to create a folder for images. So I just arranged some images and those images I'm going to put there. So let me add the images. So these images actually we need it. So we having the images for the burgers over there. Even I just copied from this website. So I just copied here, save them. So that design wise and everything is looking good to you. And we having a website logo as well. This is my website logo I will use. And here I will use a header. So this is my header. I will use in this my header label. To give the look and feel and the UI, these images we will use over there. So we have done with the entities and the database. So do you have any query so far? Why you take SQL script folder seed file? Hmm. The SQL script folder I created here and here I added the same seed data which I run in my SQL server for doing the entry. Even what are the images we are using in the SQL script, those images also I added. So now mm -hmm. if you will check out, you will get items here. You will get categories here. These entries done by the seed script this way and we have to run uh, need to run that script hmm. need to run this script sir this script and, uh, how did we generate sir manually you generated or uh, how did you get the data this script can be generated here simple there is option available here a script database as this is for creating the database, but you are going to create the database script. So we having the generate script option. So from here it can be generated. So you can select which table is script you are willing to generate. You can select them from here. Let's say I'm going to select all the table script. Then save into the new query window. And then it will generate a script like this way. Create table address, create table roles, logins, users. This is the schema. So data I have not generated, data also I can generate in the same way. So there make sure when we are selecting the option that time you have to select data as well. So here generate a script. Let's say I'm generating four items. 
and here new query window in advance you have to decide do you need a schema or do you need data i need data only this way the schema last time we created data this time created here so this is my data script you can see insert item is it clear uh, sir but initially you added manually right data in the table only for users table i had roles table i added only for this one i added manually you obviously initially i have added manually when i created this project after that i generated it so now here we did with the database part as well so now here what i'm going to do here i'm just going to write the code for login so for login we are using a respinet core identity and in respinet core identity we having the managers so we having here user manager role manager and sign in manager using these managers we can write the code to complete the login workflow to complete the sign up workflow and sign out workflow so that code i will write here in my services layer okay so here in the services i will add a folder for interfaces so this is my interfaces folder and in the interfaces i will add it for i auth service i'm adding a interface for i auth service this is i auth service i'm adding and it should be here public and here i will define some methods <clears throat> so i will define a method to create a user to authenticate user and to do sign out so let's say i'm creating here i'm defining a method to create a user and so how we can create the user we can create the user by passing the user detail so user a string it would be password and from where this user will come so user will come from the this repository reference we are adding here so user will come from the entities this way similar way we will have a method for sign out boolean it would be here sign out we will have a method to authenticate user authenticate user where we will pass username and password a string the username and a string we having password in this way so these three methods we needed one for creating means sign up another one for authentication means login this is for sign out so this method we will implement so let me remove on this class add a folder for implementation or we can add let's say for <coughs> services
So let me add here a service with the name Auth service. It is Auth service. Let's make it public and <clears throat> implement the interface IOT service in this way. So we we implemented it here and the authentication service code will be right using the user manager and sign in manager so let me add here sign in manager i'm adding here sign in manager add the this package also a microsoft asp net core identity package here we need to install so here in the service make sure we added the reference of repository it's fine let me install a package for a spinet core identity <clears throat> So this package, I'm just going to install it. So this is a package of an it install. Now we can use this sign in manager. Similar way we can use here user manager. So, sign in manager is part of uh, ISP.NET Core identity table, right? ISP.NET Core identity library. let me use here dependency injection to initialize the value for sign in manager and user manager in this way so here we are using sign in manager we are using user manager that's why so this is the way we just initialize the sign-in manager and user manager with the help of dependency injection. Do I will use these two classes, sign-in manager and user manager. These are the built-in classes in ASP.NET Core Identity. We are using to implement the login workflow and to create the user. So these classes are providing some methods to us, which we don't need to write explicitly to implement the login. In the sign-in manager, we have a method, password, sign-in async, where I need to pass username, I need to pass password, I need to pass D1 to remember the username and password. And the next we having D1 to look out the failed attempt this way. So in the sign-in manager, we already having a method to check the username and password availability. I don't need to write my own code. So that's why I'm using here this, these two managers classes now result now do check here result is succeeded or not if it is succeeded means we having the username and password in the database sir, no no question, sir. return the login user sir that in the auth service constructor uh, sign in manager and user manager is injected right so that uh, registry where we have done 
I mean, you have to register that to the startup process. This one I will define. So these are the built-in classes. Okay, so that setting I will do. I have not done. So now let me get here the logged in user detail using user manager. I can get it. Find by name and do pass username here this way. Similar way I will get roles as well. So where logged in user roles I'm getting here. So we have a user manager find role uh, get role async. So by passing the user, I can get that user role this way. And finally return the user return this user and before returning the user let me add the roles this way roles dot to array if user is not logged in then return null this way so this is the way we checking here username password availability if it is available return user with its role if it is not available return null simply so this code easily we have done with the help of sign in manager. Similar way, when we are going to create a user, I can use user manager. So let me use here user manager to create it where result equal to it is user manager and then create async. <clears throat> Sorry, this way. Let me check out if result is succeeded or not. If it is succeeded, now assign the role to the user. <clears throat> so let me assign the role as well. So do one thing. Now let me pass here a parameter for role. So I'm having a where response which I'm creating for user manager. It is here add to role async. Do pass user and role this way. If return succeeded. So whether it's true and false, based upon that, we are returning. And finally, if things are not fine, return false, this way. So this is the way we are going to create a user. This is for adding the user into a spinet user table. Then this is for assigning the role to the created user. So what role I'm assigning the role name I will pass from the UI or when I will call this method that time I will pass it. So let me pass here a one parameter as well role this way. Now similar way we can write the code for sign out as well. So I'm using here let's say try catch because while sign out there can be any exception as well so i'm using here sign in manager then we having sign out async and let's wait for to do the sign out then return true else return false return false this way so we have completed the code here for login 
the user creation that is for sign up and for sign out all the method we have completed so do you have any query regarding this authentication service we have created sir uh, can you please come to sign out method sir what actually happens when we create sign out sir uh, if the user has username and password is there then it will uh, log into the application right then uh, sign out how does it happen sir like when user will log in it will create a cookie at the browser end so in sign out what do we do we clear that cookie and that cookie is stored in client machine or mm, machine so anything else do you have now this service i will use in my presentation layer to complete the login workflow and sign up workflow so we having this ui let me add here account controller so i'm adding here a controller for account in this way and here let me define login action login post method http post and here we will have a login model so let me add here a login model class where we will have username and password so i'm adding here a login model class and for login model let me add two properties username and password let's say this way we added it so this one i will receive here let's say login model i'm receiving this way so for login let me add a view so i'm adding here a view for login so here i can use the template create model class we having the login model this way click on the add button so this is my login i had it let me change some label this is my login here in this way so how we will implement the login flow login flow we implement with the help of authentication service so let me set up this authentication service here so what happens here are in program.cs file actually in .net 6 they have changed few things the one thing they change it here they have removed the startup.cs file and what are the code we write in startup.cs file they move to the program.cs file so if you are looking at at .net 5 or if you are comparing this configuration with the .net 5 so this code is 
here similar to the configure configure service method till this point and this code is for configure method so in the configure services method we configure the dependencies so all the dependencies you need to add here all the middleware which you're going to configure in configure method we add over there this is my configure method code and this is my configure services code and when it is coming to the program.cs file there so there we having a builder this is the host builder we are creating and we are calling this run method so from this builder we creating the app variable and this app variable we are running finally so this is the code we having the from program.cs file so this way the code changes we having in case of dotnet 6 so do you have any query regarding this setup Sir, can you please scroll up that uh, creation builder? So, the create builder will create object of which class of uh, uh, configure service? Configure which object it will it return? If I'm looking at here, this is creating my application builder to configure my application global configuration so what are the configuration i'm going to apply at my application label through this web application builder we we are defining or we are doing that's i'm saying here the the setting here is similar to configure service method the setting below here is similar to the configure method so what you can do here the setting for your services i can move here i can put here but what i feel here we will have so many repositories we will have so many services better ways here we should move those dependency in a separate class file and that separate class file i can add either in my web ui either i can add in my services so the best place i'm considering to add that here so i'm adding a folder with the name configuration and in this configure folder I will add a static class to configure dependencies. Let's say configure dependencies. Let's make it public. let's make this class as static then i'm adding here a method public static and define the method name let's say configure services this way and here we use i service collection i service collection for adding the service dependencies this way then we will have here i configuration to get the configuration setting so let me add the name space for this 
So here first I will add here database setting. How? Services dot add db context. So what is my db context? My db context is app db context. And then do pass here connection string. So first of all add db context then connection string so from where we read the connection string we read the connection string from map settings dot json so here i will define my connection string connection string name let's say db connection then connection string value so as we having the value here I can copy and put it here this way. So now this value I will read here using this configuration. It's an option that connection string I will pass options dot use SQL server. And then I will pass a connection string. Let's say config dot we having get connection string this way. This way I can pass it. Now let me add the setting for identity. That is a services dot add identity so in identity we what are the main table we having user we having role so these are the store i'm adding here then add here the store where we having the store is for user and role so i'm adding here add entity framework store that is with app db context and add here default token provider it is default token providers so this setting need to add here Okay, it is at default token provider. In this way. So this setting need to add here for database. Now let me add the mapping for services. So services mapping services dot add a scope. And for a stop, it would be here I auth service. And then auth service. This way. So mapping of the interface and classes we define here. Like this way. Sir. Uh, the above line services dot identity is there right? that will register what uh, uh, app to be contact right? this will add here the identity store as i said here in this one we have a store user store and role store so that is store for the spnet core identity we are registering here like this way so the store I'm using here entity framework core. So that entity framework store I'm using here with this default token provider. So this is a setting we having here for a spinet core identity so that we can access okay. these managers, user manager, role in manager, sign in manager as a DI. So that's why 
these are the services we are accessing here here sign in manager user manager so this setting we define here so it will basically register the store right hmm register the store as well as managers what is inside the store store means the place where you are saving this information so what is the place it is a database and the database we are interacting with entity framework code and all the interfaces and uh, service we have to register here with the add scope method hmm the dependency okay. we need to register like this way about the di i will tell you in the next session what is the di and how it is working <clears throat> so few code i'm not explaining today few code i will explain in the next session sir one more question that app db context services dot add db context is for di registering the app db context we have used on configuring method right there we have given the connection string so then why do we have to give here also that connection, connection string? string we have not we will not use from the hard code one connection string always recommended to read from your setting file so from here i will read the connection string Uh, sir, in the app that connection string, here. that connection string, I'm using only for development environment for generating the database. In the production one, the connection string will be used from here, not from the hard code one. So that's why we are defining the connection string here. Okay, so we having this way. Configure dependencies. We now did here. Now we use this class in my program dot cs file. So over here, I will call that one. So this is here configure dependencies. and for using the configure dependencies let me add the reference of services add reference of services in this way now add the name space at top level now i'm using here configure services and do pass builder dot services and do pass builder dot configuration this way these parameter we have pass we pass the services we pass the configuration so that we can access them here so what are the things actually i need to write here in my program dot cs file i moved to a separate class file so that here we will keep changing the things we don't need to change at the program file again and again simple and for asp.net core identity make sure we are using here we use authentication as well otherwise we will not able to read the logged in user information so this is a setting need to do here for asp.net core identity so now let me inject that auth service here to implement the workflow so to implement the workflow let me use i auth service so it is here auth service let me add the missing name space and inject it it is here auth service 
and then auth service so now using the auth service i will check the username and password availability so here i will get where the user equal to auth service dot authenticate user do pass username and password so model and dot email model dot password now if the user is available in the database then redirect the user to the user dashboard so here we need to write the code to redirect it to the user dashboard or to the admin dashboard so depending upon the role we can do the redirection here got it so in the asp.net core we having a concept areas so with the help of areas we can create the modules in our application so right now everything is public like anyone can access without login but when it is coming to protect the pages or create the uh, modules we create the areas here so let me add a folder for areas and in the areas folder i will add the area for admin i will add the area for user so i am adding here a area for admin so make sure whenever you are creating the area folder name is exactly same areas which you have to add yourself after that you will get the option for adding the area otherwise you will not get the option to add the area until you will not add the areas folder here now this is the end point you need to copy and add it here in this time in program.cs file so this end point i'm adding here this way so when i add it for area this is area and this is for normal end point so this way we added the end point for area as well here mm, this way or you can define mm, like this way also instead of creating two separate method i added it one app dot use endpoint and we added endpoint like this way so this is fine here now so now you can see admin having its own controller models views so actually the area in itself is a separate website that is having its separate controller its separate model separate views so everything the area will have separately so area can be think about is a separate project we are going to create so that we can do here better code management and better file management and the application label whenever you are building an erp because an erp even in the enterprise grade application we need to deal with the various modules so how those various modules we can manage with the help of with the help of areas we can manage it easily so that's why we having this way so now do right click here and here i'm adding a controller i'm adding a controller for dashboard let's say dashboard controller mapping here and for index 
let me add a view for dashboard so i'm adding here a dashboard view for admin so let's say this is my admin dashboard and here at area label one more thing we need to do here we need to use here area attribute define area name like this my admin so in your application what are the controllers you will add at each controller labels i need to define area attribute this way so instead of adding at each controller label better ways here we can add a base controller so i'm adding here a base controller over here i'm adding base controller means parent class i'm adding and instead of adding at each controller common things i will define at base controller label let me inherit it from base controller so this way we have completed so we have completed it at this way base controller simply so do you have any query regarding this base controller what is the meaning of area admin you have defined above the base controller as i said area is a folder so whenever you are going to create multiple modules in your application so we are managing with the help of area so admin is a module similar way you can have hr module you can have your user module you can have your employee module got it so every module will have its own set of files to manage so that's why this is the module management we are doing here okay and what is the purpose of defining area admin above base controller in bracket the purpose is here how you will identify these controllers are the part of this admin area okay because the same controller can be in another area as well got okay. it so to identify yes. to distinguish the controller from the another areas we are decorating them with area attribute hello hmm uh, uh, i have one question on that so uh, may maybe uh, apply on the multiple area in the one control no it, there can be only one area okay and in, uh, i inherit the in the base class of the another uh, controller and the uh, maybe is area is required uh, to face in the same model so is possible on that yeah base yes. controller is just like a base class so what are the things we having in common at area label we can define over there let's say i can create here a global property for logged in user to access the logged in user detail as current user so it would be more clear when i will keep adding the code into the base controller into the ui right now just think about all the common things we had here in this base controller okay understood similar way here we don't have layout as we having the layout here so let me copy this shared folder and these files and put here so that we can have the admin layout separately so the admin layout we will have the link for dashboard so let me remove the area from here so it is here let's say dash board at the same level we will have order right now we don't have that but later on we will have the order where we see my orders 
my orders so i will have a order controller as well this way okay it's admin one so admin label it would be here all orders so admin can see all the order placed so let me add here order add view so this is my order list so order controller also make sure we have been edited from base controller this way so this way how it is working order dashboard so it's having a separate website we are doing here and here we add the other things as well let's say welcome message sign out so those things also we will add here so in that case let's say justify content in between let me add a one more ul uh, that would be here for sign out controller account action would be here sign out in this way this is sign out then use here asp area empty this is sign out we have and here we will have a welcome message it is welcome this i will change it later on i did here only guest this is my welcome message this is for sign out we having the things simply so one question like uh, what does that asp area here asp area is here if you're looking at we having controllers here inside the area okay. and outside the area so whenever you're accessing the okay. controller outside the area we mention asp area empty whenever you are accessing inside the area we mention that area name so okay. here i'm not defining area name explicitly because i'm already the part of the admin area Okay, okay. Okay. So if I want, uh, if I use this area, this uh, admin area in uh, main layout page, then there I'd be mentioning ASP hyphen area equal to admin. You're right. Okay. Thank you. So there's a mapping of the controller from where you're going to access it. So this one we added here for admin, now in account controller, I can add a condition. But if user dot roles and it is containing what roles, admin role and then redirect to the admin dashboard return redirect to the action action index controller dashboard area admin similar way we having 
a condition for user so user area we have not added so far as we added for admin same way we add for user as well okay so let me first complete the flow for admin then i will complete the for user so this is the things we have done for login so login i cannot do until i will not create the user so let me add here the code for sign up as well so i'm adding here code for sign up this is user model So let me add here the user model here. It's class user model and add here properties to do sign up. So these are the properties we needed here to do sign up. I added here. Now let me add view. It's template create model class. We will have a user model. So this way we added sign up ID we don't need email name password confirm password and this is sign up this one we don't need so we added here this way the things So let me add here the link as well to connect these pages. So we have been an order list. It is account. Then login. Then account sign up so this way we have been here login and sign up sir from where you input the role from where uh, we input roles where we input in role we getting from the database Okay, from UI we don't have to insert the roles. Or no, at the sign I, up one I will do it. Sign up okay. code I have not completed. Okay, okay. So now, so now here I will write the code to do sign up here. So let me change this code with sign up so first i need to change i need to check here model state is valid so if it is valid now let me create the user class object in this way now create the properties here this way now using the authentication service we can create the user so i'm creating here boolean result 
then this is my auth service call create user method do pass user and pass password so password is here model dot password and what role you are going to give to the user so first i'm creating the admin user so i'm assigning the role admin now do check here if result is true so redirect to the action login because user has been created successfully so go to the login page so there's a code uh, we have written for sign up over here and sir if we have created an user an user role uh, would be admin for end user and role would be here only user it's only one time because i don't have the admin ui separately from the same page i'm adding the admin user okay so later on i will change it from admin to normal user role okay sir one question like uh, we have user class one in entity we project right mm. and one we have created here for in uh, model so a like if it is almost same like even in last class as well i think we have created uh, one for database related uh, uh, actions and uh, one for ui so is it recommended to use two two classes yeah the reason is here we creating two classes because mm -hmm. presentation layer models will have presentation validation okay so here in this user model we having these validation even yes. we are comparing the password as well yes yes in the database level we don't have confirm password okay okay so that class we are separating this one we are separating because we don't know how many fields can be here there can be 3 there can be 4 there can be 7 okay so in case if there are same then Uh, we can reuse it right no issues with that we can reuse but when it is coming to designing the ui we make mm. always separate okay okay fine as a best practice because the ui models are different back end are different and ui keep changing okay database tables are not change frequently but ui keep changing frequently yeah okay so that's why we separated the models of ui layers from mm. the entities okay thank you sir so now let's set the web ui as a startup project and run it i'm putting the breakpoint here so what is the error okay the thing is the app db context i have not changed to take the connection string from the configuration so this i'm adding here for migration purpose and we need to add two constructor one default one parameterize for configuring program dot cs file so this is my connection db context options
Mm, this way. So this one is required if you are setting the connection string from app settings.json. So now what is the another error it is showing? Okay, now there is no error. So let's go to here, login, sign up page. This is my sign up page. Do pass your email, let's say admin at the rate gmail.com. Password admin at the rate. Phone number. Then do sign up. So this one is coming here. In this way. And then role we are assigning to admin. It's done. So now a user has been created in the database admin. And this create a user, we have assigned the role as well. User ID one having the role ID one. So one admin we created after creating the admin. Let me change my account controller to do sign up only user. Because admin sign up we don't have direct. Only user sign up we have. This user sign up we get it here simply. Mm -hmm. So now let me sign up again. This time I'm using user. Password. phone number so this one is coming here so role this time is coming user and one more thing you have noticed in dotnet 6 in dotnet 6 whether you are doing the change in the cs file whether you are doing the change in the CSHTML file. This hot reload features is helping us to update the build. We don't need to restart it. In .NET 5, the issue was, every time if you're doing any change to the CSHTML, to the c -sharp file, I need to restart my application. But here, you don't need to restart. Here we having a hot reload features which I enable hot reload on file save. So hot reload means what are the changes you are doing in the C sharp code in the CSHTML file without restarting the application build would be updated. This is the new features available starting from .NET 6. It's a very good features which will boost up your productivity. So just continue here. And now this time you will get a one more user has been created with a user this way. So this is the whole reload working fine with the changes here. And now let me log in. So for login, I'm putting here a breakpoint and go to the login page. I'm login here using admin. And then admin at the rate. One, two. So let's continue. It's going to the admin dashboard. <clears throat> this way. The workflow for admin dashboard is also working fine here. 
I have not written the code for sign out. So that sign out code also, I need to write it. So as we have been the sign up, same way we can add here, sign out. And for sign out, let me use here authentication service, <clears throat> sign out. After that, redirect to the action sign out complete why i'm creating a sign out complete because in the sign out it's going to delete the cookies so cookie will clear completely when you do the redirection otherwise it's not done properly Sir, in cookies, what all we are storing, sir? That uh, identity, ASP.NET identity, what all it stores in the cookie? A logged in user detail. Logged in user username. Now I'm adding here a view for the sign out complete. So I'm adding here a view. So you have been success fully sign out in this way. So this is for sign out we added here and do the change for login as well. It is here input type password same thing to mention for sign up as well so this is my sign up in this way so let's see how it is working So login from user at the rate gmail.com then password. So it is going to the, okay. I think user area we have not created. We created only admin area. Yeah, you're right. So let me copy everything for admin, paste it for user. Now change area to user here. It's just a copy paste. This way we add it. So we added here the user as well. So two areas we added, one for admin, another one for user. So now you can log in for user as well. So user at the rate gmail.com, then password. Now it is coming the user one, you can see. Label I have not changed, it's a label issue. So here at user dashboard, it is user dashboard. Now reloaded, it is a dashboard. This is the new thing we have been in .NET 6. It's a hot reload features, sign out. It's coming to 
you have been signed out successfully. So this workflow is working fine for sign out, for login, for the sign up. So do you have any query regarding this workflow? No. Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's have a, a break of 10 minutes. After that, I will tell you the next things. So a few UI changes we will do here after the break so that it will look like fine. Is it fine? Yes. Yes, sir. So shall we go ahead now? So let me do one thing here. Now let me design the UI. Because if you're looking for the dominoes, so they having a logo over here. Similar way, we need to define the logo. If I'm going to the home page, uh, let's say not here. So we having a header, so that header I'm just going to set. So this is my text. I will change the things over here. So I can add here a image for logo. So this is my logo. So this is the way I had it here. And here at the this one, let's I'm putting here menu, home controller index one. And here also, uh, we need to define a section where uh, we need to show So a section we need to define over here. Okay, let me first change this logo and this site name. <coughs> so I can see we getting the logo like this way and the name of the website. Same thing when it replicate everywhere. I need to copy it and put for admin. Like here. Unlike here. So every here we having that 
things same things now so slash admin dashboard it's coming here it's user dashboard it's coming here so perfectly it's coming here now this is my heading for website so these are the ui changes we are doing here and here i need the things at the index page a note in the dashboard and the root label so this section to replace by a section where we having a background image and the other things so this design part is actually taken care by the ui designer as a developer you will not involved but here i designed for you like this way so it would be on the full screen so it's not a full screen is coming into the center the reason is here we are rendering it at this layout inside this layout so the thing is we need a full size layout without container so usually when we build the real application we add multiple layout so i'm adding here a one more layout let's say full size layout i'm adding so it's a razor layout i'm adding here let's say full size layout now what are the things we having here just do one thing let me create a partial view as well so i'm creating a partial view for header so that header can be reused at more than one layout page so whatever this section we having let me cut from here and put this header and this header i can render here using partial tag it is name then underscore header same thing need to add here for this full size as well add this style sheet add this footer as well and this footer i can define as a footer layout as a footer partial view so let me add here a footer partial view this way same way it would be here footer layout full size layout so now here at this index dot html i will mention layout equal to full size layout this way and here we will display 
the list of items so that list i will add here so this bit is coming i think there's an issue with designing so now it is coming fine this is the section it is coming over there this way so now we will display the list of product one more thing it is still missing there is a gap between header and this footer so you can see this gap is actually coming because this css class so let me let's do one thing from the header let me remove this css class so now that gap has been removed So now everything is working fine here. So this is now start looking just like we have been your website for Domino's and Pizza Hut, like this way. One thing is also missing here. The missing part is when the user will log in, we need to show the actual logged in user as welcome not the guest user so how we can show the actual logged in user over there so for this one uh, we need to use user manager so with the help of user manager we can get the logged in user information and this act one actually we need to use at more than one places so just do one thing for accessing the logged user detail everywhere let me add here a folder for helpers in helpers let's say i'm adding a base view class as we have being the base controller class same way i'm adding here base view class and this base view page class we will inherit from the razor page class so we have been here razor page class so inherit it from here In this way and uh, this is abstract class so let's make this one as an abstract now we need to get the current user i'm just going to add here a property for getting the current user so this is my current user and make it as read only here i will check whether the current user is if user is logged in then return here logged in user detail
so for this one what we can do here we can create here a service so do one thing here i'm adding a folder for interfaces let me add a interface for accessing the logged user detail i use an accessor and in a user accessor let me define a method a user we get user detail now let me define this implementation so i'm adding a folder for services and define here class implementation so it would be here i user accessor so instead of writing the code everywhere i will write the code here to access my logged in user detail so here we use the user manager and http context accessor this way the user manager i added let me inject it using di so it is user manager it is http accessor and here let me checked http accessor http context then user not equal to null then return the logged in user with the help of user manager then get the user by name get the user async in this way finally return the result else in return null so this way it is providing the user information so it would be here in base page class let me create the property for i user accessor so it is here user accessor and here i'm using here dependency injection so we having here razor inject razor inject is an attribute to inject the this user accessor and finally use user accessor dot get user else return null this way and this user accessor mapping make sure you have defined in a startup class otherwise you will get the error so open this program dot cs file and here we added the dependency so let me use here builder dot services then add a scope and would be here i user accessor then user 
accessor mm, this way same thing we'll do here for So other things are fine now. Okay. So now let's make this class as a base class. As we create the base controller, same way make this as a base class. How we can make we having this underscore view import. Here I can use inherit. base view page class where I'm using T model so this way need to add it to make it a base class same do for admin also same here also So now at the layout page in place of guest I can use here current user which I created in base class current user then name so logged user name now we will get it add pin user here still we have not applied the security it's a simple workflow where after the login login user detail we are showing security part i will show you in the next session today i'm showing you only simple workflow so do login here user at the rate gmail.com and you can see i'm getting here welcome user this time sign out for admin it will be here admin welcome so click here it's admin welcome so everything's working fine here so do you have any query regarding passing the logged user detail at the ui label what is razor inject sir razor, razor inject is an attribute in asp.net core for dependency injection so dependency injection i will tell you in the next session how the di is working here so because of that di this one actually i'm injecting here using the razor inject okay. what is t model t model is also a If you know about the C generics in the C sharp, how we create yeah. the generics class? We having a type between the open tag and the closing tag. So similar way, T model is a type here available. Because what are the view we having? That view can be the strongly type view and a normal view. So model is a dynamic property available at each view label. So this T model is pointing to that one okay and why you uh, inherit in view import.chtml the reason is here i want to access this current user as a global property at all the views 
so instead okay. of accessing it only at layout page i add it here at one place after adding it one place and at all the views file current user property now available so okay. wherever you want to access the logged in user detail at the ui page you don't need to think much just use at the rate current user and logged in user detail will available there okay sir so this view import is acting as a base view as we have in the base controller for all the controllers so like if we have many uh, areas then we might need to import it in all the areas right yeah if you are willing to access the logged in user detail everywhere hmm. so everywhere need to add it even i did it in user area as well i added in admin area as well even i added at the root level as well everywhere i did okay like if we have added it in root level can we access it in areas no and like some common place so that it will be available because area having the its own existence separately okay now at the root level layout as well same things can be added if user is logged in i can add a condition if let's say current user not equal to null it means welcome so the welcome one else show the login one so if user is logged in at the root level also it will let us know so let me log in here So now if he's coming to the home page here also i'm getting welcome user got it so now everywhere we have been the welcome user now now after logout it's not coming so logged in user information we passed across the controller across the views as well so that everywhere we can access it and still we have not applied the security because admin can access the user pages even without login also you can access the admin pages so that security part of we will apply in the next session let's say how we can protect our pages so that without login nobody can access admin pages and user pages so is it clear now yes sir So do you have any query regarding today's class?